First, it branches off of C5 and T1, and after going through the brachial plexus, those, uh, those nerve fibers, the lateral and medial cords blend together and put off the branch that is the median nerve. There's no sensory or motor branches above the elbow, so the upper arm really has no innervation or sensory aspects above the elbow for the median nerve, um, but at the elbow, it innervates pronator teres, flexor carpi radialis, palmaris longus, and then deep to those is the flexor digitorum superficialis. The AIN, or the anterior interosseous nerve, splits off distal to and inferior to the proximal edge of the FDS, or the flexor digitorum superficialis. So the median nerve proper passes under that FDS um, proximal edge, and then it splits off that AIN. The anterior interosseous nerve runs superficial to the interosseous membrane along the forearm. So it's very deep in that forearm, underneath FDP, right along that uh, interosseous membrane. It provides innervation to the flexor digitorum profundus of index and long finger, the flexor pollicis longus, and pronator quadratus. The innervation of pronator quadratus, because the pronator quadratus is kind of a redundant muscle for pronation of the forearm, that is kind of a sacrificial muscle that you can oftentimes, uh, surgeons will take that median nerve, take it off of pronator quadratus, lose that innervation entirely, and attach it to the ulnar nerve when you have a patient with an ulnar nerve lesion. So it's a common um, donor site for nerve transfers. The median nerve proper distally gives off the palmar cutaneous branch just above the level of the wrist. There's some variation on how far above the level of that wrist crease it gives it off, but it gives out that palmar cutaneous branch, and that provides sensory information to the palm and the base of the thumb, that thenar base. Know that because that is proximal to the transverse carpal ligament, there's implications when we start doing testing for sensory with patients with carpal tunnel syndrome. The remainder of the median nerve proper travels under that transverse carpal ligament with nine other tendons. All four of the flexor digitorum superficialis, all four of the flexor digitorum profundus, and the FPL. So it's a very crowded tunnel, that carpal tunnel. This is a really significant source of compression because that nerve travels through with lots of, other, uh, lots of other bodies. It gets compressed very easily in that area, either with flexion compression or with pressure over that surface after the transverse carpal ligament, and deep to the palmar fascia is the recurrent thenar motor branch. This gives motor input to the thenar muscles, uh, opponens pollicis, flexor pollicis brevis superficial head, and abductor pollicis brevis. That gives that sense of mass to the thenar eminence. Then we get the motor branch of the index and long finger lumbricals, and the palmar sensory input to the radial side of that palm. 